look what came in the mail. We got the new car parts. This must be the rest of the, the Porsche Macan shock parts. And I think I figured out what this rubber boot is. So we're going to get it put back together and answer that question. So after a little bit of online searching, I figured out these are rubber bump stops. Uh, what keeps the car from bottoming out? I don't know why they're in such sad shape. Uh, 60,000 miles shouldn't be that way. She's not off-roading this thing like a dune buggy, but I've never seen bump stops this bad. Yep, this definitely the, the bump stops for the Macan. Uh, I guess they had to come from Germany because it took them a whole five days longer to get here than the shocks. The shocks got here just a, a few days ago, but I've been waiting on these parts. So I'll get this car put back together and my wife will be happy. So that is what that's supposed to look like. $200 a piece for the shocks, $220, and it's $438. $100 for the bump stops, so we're right at $500. So we're gonna get this in there. I guess you're gonna use a little bit of soap. Just a little bit of lubrication. There you go. Brand new shock boot. So I've been trying to figure out exactly what this piece of plastic is for. Right here. It basically pivots on the bottom of the shock. It's just clipped on. It's not structural. There's only, it's only on one side. It's not on both sides. Really. In other words, it's only on the one side. So this one didn't have one. Now, maybe it had one and it got knocked off. I don't know. But I really think the only thing it does, the bolt head goes in there like that. And the bolt goes in, and then the washer goes in between the shock and the lower A-frame. The only thing this thing seems to do is it won't let, obviously, the washer go in there. So you have to put it together like this. So maybe that's all that's for, is just to keep it, uh, you know, so it's done properly. Lowest common denominator, nobody can screw it up until they do something like that. Seems like overkill to me. I'm, I'm not going to put that on the new shocks. I don't see any purpose in it. So if anybody's got any ideas why that thing needs to be there, let me know. They give you this nice little, this nice little hat to push down on it. That makes it nice. It's definitely not a gas shock because I can push it down pretty easy. And then it goes up fairly slow. They gave me a new nut, so that's a plus. So the first thing we do, obviously, is put this. Because I marked them, I'm just going to do it right this way. Okay, there's that. Okay, just have why the new nut's a 17 millimeter, so slightly bigger than what came off, which was a 15 millimeter. Okay, that's pretty good. Then we take this. So now it's 11 sixteenths. Five, five millimeters to set. Everything changed. They changed the size of everything. So I'm going to put that on there.
wrench, wrench. stops the rattling that we heard because that hangs there now we're going to get this uh, driver's side shock stuck in here uh interestingly enough in the four days i've been waiting on parts to get here i've had a spider web probably a black widow i don't know if y'all can see that but it's built a web all up under here that's nice and encouraging i guess um it's got to be living up in there somewhere <laughs> okay so hopefully it doesn't decide to come out and bite me. So when installing these shock absorbers back in the rear, just compress them down and they'll fit up in the fender wheel. You gotta be pretty quick, but you can work them down through the, the upper A-arm, down to the lower A-arm. Uh, start these top nuts, get them, get it hanging from them. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna torque the lower nuts. Then I'm gonna come back and I torque these top ones. And here you can see the suspension is just literally hanging from the spring. But I can compress this shock just by it with my hand, my arm. Compress it, get the nut started, get the bolt started in the lower A arm. And I'm going to come along here and run it up using this uh, electric impact. It's just tight enough, just run it down in there. And then I torque this lower nut back up. And this is where it gets weird because the torque says to torque it to 111 foot pounds and then come back and torque it 180 degrees. So strange portion magic going on there so i tightened them down torqued them down to what i thought was a good number and this is where i insert the disclaimer that i'm not a professional mechanic so uh, don't really take all my advice look up any of the torque specs you need for your job if you choose to take this on you do so at your own peril can you roll that in if you will get this one and this one set and then this one's set. It'll just work its way all the way around where they all stick out and they all line. Once you have worked that inner fender liner back into the car, it's just a matter of taking these plastic uh, 10 millimeter nuts threading them back onto their studs and taking the, sheet, the, the metal screws and there's about, uh, what, seven of each, maybe eight of each. So you'll go around and just make sure they all, start them all to start with, get them all started, then come back and start tightening them all up. That's what I'm doing here. And I actually still missed one screw, so I gotta come back at the very end of this. Once I had everything up in there, I thought I was done, I, there was still a screw laying on the ground. This corner piece, fitting it back where it kind of seals off everything finally is, was really the most complicated part to put back up in here on this inner fender well. Uh, that is because it is sandwiched between the, the bottom plate, uh, aerodynamics of the car, the side skirt, and the inner fender well. So figuring out how to do all that, I actually ended up having to lay down and then uh, pull different panels out of the way and slip it in. Uh, each each segment of it so that it all fit like you see me doing here so anyway it was the most complicated part of the whole thing so good luck with that if you take this on and somewhere right in here is where i figured out i had one extra screw uh, so then i had to take start taking my light and search around to try to find it um, figure out where it went Two things I'm going to leave you with. The screws that go up underneath the front edge of the car, up under here, are slightly different. They have a big round washer on them and then the normal ones. So make sure you don't get those confused with all the other screws that go up in these fender wells. There's 
All these are pretty easy, but then there's a lot of stuff over here on this inside of this uh, fender well. And it helps to have a kind of a small screwdriver so you can, you can get in there and you can find the hole. And then you know where to put that screw right there to tighten it up. So anyway, those two things. Other than that, it's all buttoned up. I'll let you know how it works. Well, if you made it this far, thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe if you find it useful. I hope you can find you a pool to go cool off into.